religion. What would it be like to be on Earth 12,000 years ago when mammoths roamed the planet and hunter and gatherers had to fight for survival? This week we take you on a big adventure going to the most eastern point of our trip, dating back 12,000 years to the zero point of history and civilization here in Gobekli Tepe. Where are we now, Bob? <laughs> um, we're in this big salt lake. <laughs> That's all I really know about it. <laughs> it's about to get salty. <laughs> So a couple of facts about this salt lake. It's one popular breeding ground for flamingos and it's the second largest lake in Turkey. So Lake Van is the biggest. Shah told me that it's the second largest lake in the world. That's but what Google said. Fact check that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Haven't seen it on any signs here either, so. But no, it's not the second largest lake in the world, unfortunately. But it is all made of salt, so that's really cool. We're just walking on salt right now. <laughs> so I'm a tad confused why everyone gets those lovely photos with the sunset walking on white salt. And we are walking in brown water. Very picturesque. Someone care to explain that one for me. our park up for the night which is just in the Selim town and then behind us we're near all the fairy chimneys and cave houses so pretty cool like free spot so fingers crossed we're all good here but it looks really nice so hopefully no creepy shepherds here so within five minutes of parking up in our lovely spot putting the pan on for some dinner we had our first issue of the day Mr. Cupboard. Every time, right? Every time. Mr. Cupboard has decided to come off. Fan life. Me and the toolbox didn't really get along at first, but I've grown to know that we need him. Oh, I don't want to jinx that. I think we're going right. How cute is the toolbox? I almost need like one of those tool belts. Yeah. Like yeah maybe it's Christmas present. Yeah, maybe it's Christmas. <laughs> just want to eat, we're so hungry. Okay, now has he gone and done it? Look at that. Maggie! successful day for the client. Now we can eat. Go. Another good day. Good on. So we were just having dinner and we were talking about a few of the comments we'd read on Park for Night today just around like, you know, vans getting stones thrown at them and obviously the, the shepherd thing today and then a guy comes up and just gives us this lovely lettuce and you know like i think that's like a bit of a sign just to be like yeah it is all good like they're, they're so generous and kind here like you're safe and it's easy you know and, um how nice is that give us a run through so i went outside to clean the lettuce before and then he came over and helped me clean the lettuce and it turns out he's got a farm over there which was his father's farm now he's got it and then he's given us all these spring onions and fresh parsley oh my god amazing yeah so good so we've woken up this morning we're just getting ready to go for a hike in alara valley and old mate that gave us the visuals last night invited us in for wee tea. What a way to start the day.
friend Fadaya was so excited to show us around his old family home. This was about 100 metres from his farm and he explained to us where his room was that he grew up in. He also showed us their kitchen, where they kept their cows and even their shower hole. You could tell how proud he was and it was such a nice gesture. What are those? <laughs> you mean these? The new hiking boots of 2023? Oh, you got a big bit of black tape on them. That's a lot. <laughs> Okay, so after our many chai teas and our lovely tour this morning, we are off to do the Lara Valley hike. We just had to pay 200 lira each to get in, so rather pretty, rather pretty expensive for a hike, but um, basically we're gonna do like a three, three hour loop and see how we go. Denied from a mahuba. Check out a hello to some people on a hike. The nerve. No. So a big part of the hike through this valley is there's lots of different churches along the way, all with their own unique style and name. And like the frescoes in there are still just so well preserved. Really amazing to see and you walk down through the valley and there's just different ones along the way. We're off to see the serpentine one now, so. I'm just walking up the steps to the serpent church. Lots of steps. <laughs> Sounds like a good one. Do not, do not look. Okay. This is the snake. So it's called the Serpent Church because there's heaps of serpent paintings on the wall that represent killing these women because of their immoral behaviour, like disobedience, like leaving their children, and now the snakes are attacking them. Savage. It started bucketing it down. <laughs> Oh my god, we are getting soaked and it, it keeps thundering so it's not really the noise you want to hear when there's like big rocks and stuff but I don't think we're too far off the end point so we're planning to get a taxi back if we can afford it. This is crazy. I honestly reckon this is like the most rain that we've had in like the few weeks that we've been in Turkey. Morgz's improvised umbrella. Well she has got my rain jacket on. <laughs> what? <laughs> this day? <laughs> Not yours mate. <laughs> I just had a guy walk past and look at me and say, came prepared. Are you taking the bloody piss mate? As if I didn't know. I was under prepared here. <laughs> Morgz has found his people. It's quite scary. What the hell is that? <laughs> That's so scary. I thought that was someone there. Here's the snow, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Okay, so we had to get a taxi back because Margie's van was parked at the other end of the hike. So we paid 200 liras for a taxi. The taxi was 30 years old, no seat belts in the back. The taxi driver decided to drive like so far over the speed limit. Like I was just prepared, prepared for all hell to break loose really. And he skidded on top of the hill. So being back in Margie, I'm really enjoying my <laughs> Morgz asked him to slow down and he laughed. So if you do what we do, which most people will probably have to do, and get a taxi back, just be wary and hold on for your life. 
Good morning gang, so for the last couple of days we have been staying at this free campsite in a place called Tarsus. Um, we're sort of making our way, just to break up our drive as we make our way east. So this campsite, so you can stay three days for free out of every 30 days. One wash a day for free, um, showers are free, there's toilets, everything like water, um, which is insane <laughs> considering you think some campsites in some places are 30 euros plus or, or whatever. It's starting to get really hot here as you can probably see I'm sweating like crazy. We're talking it's like mid 30s and it's meant to get up to the late 30s soon as well so Margie doesn't have a fan so it's going to be a very hot time so if you have any suggestions about USB fans or anything let us know. We're going to make our way east today, head towards Gobekli Tepe Really excited to sort of go east, everyone's talk quite good things about it, so let's see how we go. So far we are literally in like the middle of these like fields. It's definitely got more of like a deserty vibe, but we're now we're going up some like interesting roads, so We'll, uh, we'll show you where we park up and how we go. <laughs> We're going up there. Putting faith in you park for night. Thanks for driving, bud. That was meant to be my day driving, but too many trucks for old, for old Char. I'll show you around the park, I think. Go back 12,000 years in time. 12,000 years? Yeah, because we're going to the site of Gobekli Tepe. Dating back to 10,000 BC, Gobekli Tepe was discovered in the 80s by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt. This completely blew out all past series of hunter and gatherers at this time. To think they came together collectively and built, shaped and moulded the site without any tools or ways of communicating to each other just blows your mind. This is considered the first known monumental architecture in human history, with some theories even pointing back to the lost civilization. Do yourself a favour and look this place up and see for yourself how crazy it really is. These statues are humongous, like no idea how they would have built them. So I can't even lift Morgz's kettlebell up. <laughs> Audio tours. Hey. Cool dudes. Listening to the wish tree. So when they made a wish, they put a piece of cotton wrapped around the tree. Well, Morgz has just said that they could either do that or kill an animal. If you were that animal, you'd be praying they'd choose that cotton. So we just arrived at a town called San Liertha. I know they pronounced that wrong. But we just stumbled across these rock tombs. There's like 61 of them um, that you can go in and walk around for free. And it's, it's out of the sun. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. But yeah, pretty cool. Hey, not a bad activity for free. So hot. <laughs> we were just leaving and the guy was like, no, 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 there's more down there. And Morgz just said to me, I knew it was down there. So. I think the heat is getting to us and there's no wolves in it. So we're like <laughs> We're gonna have to go down and see the other ones. The 
Is that enough? He's being defeated. That won't save you. That won't save you. I resorted to one of Morgz's party shirts. It's that hot and you gotta cover yourself up. Just I think it's something that you do here out of respect and otherwise if you want everyone looking at you then cover yourself up. <laughs> checking out like one of the lakes that goes through the town and there's heaps of fish in there and what were they there sacred fish sacred fish this town is really gorgeous like we just came here because it was close to Golbeki but it wasn't in any of the Lonely Planet book that we've got like it is a bit old but this town's gorgeous like the gardens are stunning like the river with the mosques like it's, it's gorgeous so that was a good pit stop between Gobekli and our next stop, which is going to be Nemra. So we're going to see the big statue heads, which will be pretty cool. Also just googled how to pronounce the town, so it's Shan Lurfa, not San Li, San Li Urfa. So Shan Lurfa, you were great. Now we're off to the next stop. And we may set on fire because it is so hot, it's like we are sweating. <laughs> And like nothing in the van is like cold either. Like Margie's tap is now hot water. I got water bottles like are hot so when you put them in the fridge. We are looking forward to that ocean, but first we have history to see. So we have broken up right in the early to sunrise. Had a terrible sleep because it's so windy. The van felt like it's going to tip over because we're on a big lane. We just had to walk up this huge hill to get here. But it is beautiful. You can see so far. I'll show you now. So the reason we got up so early was to see those head statues. Now they date back to the first century and they're actually part of Roman Greek history. They used to be on the pillars at the top, um, but due to earthquakes and everything they'd fallen down. So most people come here for sunrise or sunset, so we obviously chose sunrise. But you've got the eastern side and the western side of this terrace area, so you can see both. And you can see so far across Turkey, it's crazy. Like this is probably the coldest we're gonna be for a while. We got puffer jackets on. What was it, nine degrees nine this degrees morning? So it's the coldest we've been in Turkey and we're at the top of Mount Nemrut, locals pronounce it like. So yeah, soaking in the coldness, sort of. <laughs> so quick tip actually, we had to... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we had to um, race up this hill because sunrise is coming out quickly and it's quite like steep walk from the car park so give yourself plenty of time and be a sensible sally and wear proper shoes nikes do not work neither do vans um we have both slipped nearly on our butts so yeah another tip for you 